In this video, I'm going to talk about the debounce operator with RxJava on Android. So, so what is a debounce operator? Well, the debounce operator's job is to filter out emitted items from the observable, from the source, that are rapidly followed or emitted one after another. So if they're emitted too quickly, basically, you can add a time delay to uh, kind of slow down the emissions, I guess would be a way to put it. And a, a really prime example of this in Android development is, uh, say you... Uh, I have a description here if you want to read it, but I'm just going to show you. So say you have Instagram open uh, and you and uh, pay attention to how Instagram does this searching. If you if you watch the search, uh, what it, it doesn't execute the search immediately as soon as you start typing. It executes the search after a time delay. So if I was to search, um, you know, programming, notice there's a time delay that it's that it waits till it executes that search. And it does that on everything, you know, like uh, workout time delay and then search. So what it's doing is it, it's not executing a search after every single character is uh, entered. It executes a search after a time delay. So what this what this is good for is is uh, limiting requests done to a server because if you make a new request on every single letter that's entered, that would be a lot of requests and it's, and it's not necessarily a good way to do it. You could very easily overload your system. Um, yeah, it's just it's just not a good way to do it. It's it's better to let the user uh, finish what they were trying to type, pause for a second, then execute the search. So the debounce operator is really great for that. And I have an example here. So once again, just like I did in the buffer example, the buffer lecture, which was the previous one, I'm going to be using Jake Wharton's Rx binding library. You can get it right here. Um, you can click this link or you can go to the buffer lecture and you can get the dependency from there. But I've already got it added to my build.gradle file. Uh, so I suggest if you don't know what that is, you can just go to the buffer lecture, go down to uh, go down to dependencies, which are here and you can get get that dependency uh, if, if you if you want, which you're probably following along. So you're probably going to want to get that. So, OK, now let's get get to the example. So what, I, what I'm going to do in the examples, I'm, I've added a search view to activity main. There's just a single uh, widget. So if I go to activity main, there's just a search view in there. And if I go back to the example here, uh, so this is now main activity. This is the only other code that's that's going to be in here. So if I go to Android Studio, let's kind of point out what I've added ahead of time so you know. I have the search view. I have the composite disposables because we always want to add our uh, observers to our, our, our observables to um, the disposals list. I have a long value that's just for going to be keeping track of the time since the last query has been executed. We're not actually going to be making a request to a server. We're just going to be kind of simulating a request to a server just as a demonstration. And this, uh, this long value is going to keep track of the time since that last kind of pretend query has been executed. Uh, then I have everything connected to the IDs. So activity main, there's the search view. Uh, the time since the last request getting set to the current time in milliseconds and uh, that's pretty much it on destroy we'll get rid of our disposables and the send request to server method uh, does nothing but this is going to be kind of the pretend method that you would be executing a server request with so that's that's the code that we have now and now i'm going to set up the observable uh, use the debounce operator and subscribe to it with an observer so basically what i want to do here is i want to uh, be able to detect when characters are entered into the search view, but I want to kind of uh, transfer that into an observable format. So um, what I'm what I want to do is you know have my search view. So search view. I want to set an on query listener. Go new on query listener. This is how we detect when things are entered into the search view and also when a search is submitted. So uh, we're not inter interested when a search is submitted, submitted, we're interested when new text is entered into the search view. So that's gonna be in here in this on query text change method. So now how can I use this? How can I kind of transfer this into like an observable Rx format? Because that's what we need if we're gonna apply the debounce operator and do all of our Rx operations. Well, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Jake Wharton's uh, Rx binding library. He actually has a widget specifically designed for this. It's called the, I believe it's the Rx search widget. Rx, yeah. So it's an Rx search view widget. Um, but I'm not going to be using that in this video. Uh, I'm not going to be using it because it actually uses the old search view widget, not the Android X search view widget. I want to use Android X stuff. 
Uh, so you can see I have the Android X one in here. I'm trying to use Android X in all of my newest lectures, newest courses, newest videos, because that's what uh, what people are going to be using moving forward. So I'm not going to be using his RX search view widget because he hasn't updated his libraries to uh, use Android X yet. But that's okay. There's there's a way around this. We can still use um, the the old way kind of kind of thing with the new search view, uh, which is an interesting thing. We're using the old way to do something, but we're, we're using the new Android X search view. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to talk about it. So this is the creating the observable and applying the debounce operator stuff. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to uh, actually just going to delete this because it's already going to be included. I'm pasting that in and now I'm going to talk about what's happening. So I'm creating a new observable of string type. I'm calling it observable query text. I'm calling the static uh, create method for creating the observable. And remember from my lectures, the uh, I did a lecture on the create method. You can scroll up and there it is right there. Uh, what the create uh, operator does is it's it's the most flexible of the Rx operators. Basically, can you can create any kind of a, like a custom observable sort of thing. So that's what we're, we're doing here because we want to transfer the input from the search view and observe that sort of thing. So I'm going to create new observable on subscribe. Inside the on subscribe method, I'm this is where I'm now adding that um, that query text listener to the search view. So then inside the on query text change, if the emitter is not disposed, I want to send that new text to uh, to the emitter to the observers, and that's how that's how this is going to be done. So that's how we kind of are able to observe changes to the text in the search view. Uh, then I'm applying the debounce operator, and I'm saying I want to um, I want to capture any changes to the search view, basically, um, and I want you to emit an object after 500 milliseconds after the last character was pressed. So basically, what that what that means is I'm typing something, I'm typing something. As soon as I stop for 500 milliseconds, um, the debounce operator will say, "Okay, we stop at 500 milliseconds. Now start emitting." And you could change this to whatever you like. Probably might be like one second might be something better. Um, it's up to you basically though. So now what's next? Now I'm going to go back to the lecture and take a look here. So now we need to subscribe an observer and observe what's going on. So once again, I'm going to copy this just to save time and go into Android Studio and I'm going to paste it in. So what's happening is I'm using referencing that new observable that we just created. I'm subscribing to it with a new observer, uh, making sure to add the disposable to the disposables list so that when the activity is destroyed, everything is sort of cleaned up. Um, then in the on next method is where the text is going to be emitted. So that search query text. And I'm using the time since last request variable to show you in the log just how long has passed since the last request is made because we want we want to make sure that the debounce operator is working correctly uh, and then printing out that search query right here and uh, then the last thing would be actually sending the request to the server which we're not actually doing but that's where you would want to do it if uh, the on next method triggered that means that enough time has elapsed that you can make another request to the server and that's where you would do that there so let's uh, let's run this and take a look and make sure that um, everything is working correctly all right, so I got the app up on the screen here. I'm going to click on the search view, and I'm just going to start typing some characters. I'm going to say, cool, my name is Mitch. Now I'm waiting, and then there you can see the emission. So so basically everything is working as we expect. Um, obviously, it's not perfect. It's not set up like totally perfect. You can see that I erased all the characters, and it submitted a request. Obviously, we wouldn't want that in a real app. We wouldn't want that to send the request to the server, but that would be easily solved by just doing an if check uh, saying if the query is empty, don't make a request sort of thing. Uh, but let's try something something else. I'll write a new sentence. Um, I am a programmer. And once again, we should see some time elapse and then the, the query is executed. So, so that's all working. Uh, that's all good to go. So that's going to be the end of kind of the example. But I want to sort of pose a question to you moving forward. So um, a very useful continuation of this so basically, I just want to say that um, right now in this form, it's not going to be super useful to do this. Uh, one big problem with this is what happens when if they start uh, sending multiple queries, because I could uh, start typing something, stop, start typing something, stop. And before the first query 
executed, uh, maybe this, this, or sorry, before the first query completed, uh, the second query could start. Potentially that's a problem that could happen if the network speeds were slow, for example. So a solution to this is to make sure that only one query can be executed at any given time. So that's kind of the coding challenge that I've posed down here. A useful continuation would be to add the following functionality. Make sure that one query isn't Make sure that more than one query isn't running at the same time. So then I have a little description down here that says, how would you do that? You would use a switch map or you could use a switch map to terminate the previous queries so that only one could ever be executed at any given time. And you haven't looked at the switch map operator yet, but we're going to soon. Um, let's just take a look at here. We have debounce, throttle first, flat map, concat map, and then switch map. Um, so the switch map is coming up, but uh, that, that's basically what the switch map does. It will only allow a... Uh, it will only emit to a single observer, basically. So as soon as something else starts executing, starts emitting, it will terminate anything that was uh, receiving emissions before and only emit to that single observer. So that, that's basically the solution, and that would be the easiest way to solve this. So I, I pose this question to you. Um, if you think you can figure it out, try and figure it out, and uh, let me know.